This episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. And joining us now to talk about another risk off day in the markets. Uh, Monday session started off okay, but then quickly turned to the downside. Joining us here to try and make sense of it all, our good friend John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. John, good to catch up with you, sir. And uh, you and I were chatting off air a little bit, thought that Monday might be okay, and then everything just quickly turned red. More risk off trade, more follow through from last week. And really just, uh, you know, an ugly day to look at the markets once again on Monday. Very much so. And it's across the board. It's obviously just not in the commodity sector. And, you know, the main trigger is that high dollar breaking out again, new highs again today. It looked like it wanted to reverse over about midway through the morning. But then we saw that price kick back in again. Again, I, the currencies against the dollar is where the true weakness is. Today it was the Brit was the, the pound uh, in Brisbane. Mm -hmm excuse me, in Great Britain. You know, that was the issue. It was tumbling to multi-year lows. Money's flowing out of that, buying this, the, uh, the U.S. dollar against it. We saw that against the yen. We saw it against the euro. And that just continues that trend. Now, that just comes over to, brings that recessionary fear, anti-inflation fear. You know, the Fed's going to attack inflation aggressively. We saw that with the rate hike last week. You're looking at these ma managed money positions and funds are holding on to fairly good sized positions, not astronomically large, but you know, that 270,000 on corn, 120,000 on beans. You know, they just want to move that money to the sidelines, good sized positions and hogs and cattle too at this time frame. And it just feels like right now they want to get out of this inflation play with the fear of things coming down. Throw in there the end of the month, end of the quarter. Again, go back and look at the grain market. What happened at the end of June? Very similar type structure in terms of end of month, end of the quarter. Last day of June, we lost 34 cents uh, on corn market that day. So, so that's probably a part of it too. Is just that liquidation as we get to the end of this time frame. You know, again, looking at that equity market, the last week of September is historically one of the worst weeks of the year, and here we are. So. Might have to hang on a little bit this week before we get to the USDA grain sacks number at the end of the week, and we'll see how things kind of behave here. But boy, it was a rough way to start the week today. Well, John, just thinking out loud here in the grain markets as a whole, I mean, we know the supply picture is relatively tight. You mentioned that uh, quarterly grain stocks report coming up on Friday. So I have to wonder amid all this selling, when does the supply and demand side come in and support this market, even in the face of these outside market headwinds? I guess, you know, we before we go screaming, you know, everyone look out below. I mean, w realistically, what are our thoughts here with how far this market could, could come down before some support, some fundamental support finally, you know, kind of takes hold, John? Yeah, that grain sucks report at the end of the month or end of the week here, the end of the month will be very interesting to see it comes out. You know, we watch some of the demand tones are seem to be quieting down. That ethanol grind last week was, you know, one of the poorest in months. Uh, that may be more of a product of, just where prices are, the lack of supply that's out there in the old crop export shipments today for both corn and beans were very disappointing. Again, maybe it's just due to the fact that the bushels aren't there to ship right now and everybody's waiting for those new crop supplies. So that does keep this market supported. I'm obviously looking at some downside targets. You know, we held in there on corn today, 100 day moving average at that 660 level. You know, we'll see if that can hold us in. If we do break that 640 kind of is an area where things kind of look cheap again, given the bushel supply. Beans, that was a little bit more scary. We've got this potential large supply coming online from Brazil next spring. You know, the Chinese demand is not there at this time frame, even though they've got some need with soybean meal prices in China pushing to, you know, record highs here recently in terms of their spot cash price. You know, so those margins are good. 
but then you get undercut by that Argentina plan. So that's one of the issues that's coming on the play in the bean market right now is, yeah, they may be shipping beans, but it's not coming from us. So at this time frame, beans look like they got a little bit more room. Maybe we get through that 14 handle up in the upper 13s. Then we'll start running into some longer term trend lines that could support this market. But again, outside markets still just get concerning and this money is just in risk off mode. People just want to take things to the sidelines here and things that are overvalued and realistically, an historical level, fourteen dollar plus beans, six six sixty, six seventy corn. You know, even cattle and hogs. When you know, cattle up in the one fifties probably is just historically high price. So maybe opening up things to the downside here, at least at this time frame. John, I wonder as well with a high U.S. dollar. And you mentioned a little bit there on exports. Uh, I wonder, does USDA come in here and revise any targets uh, for export? And if they do end up doing that on a future report here, you know, what does that do to the balance sheet? Does that uh, give us a little breathing room in the balance sheets? Uh, I would have to think it would if they do that. Yeah, that'll be concerned as we get into the October numbers and we get that the next crop production numbers. You know, they made some pretty aggressive cuts last month, you know, when they brought that yield number down for both corn and beans. We'll see if that continues to be the trend. And, you know, and again, very quickly, you had 100 million bushels here, 100 million bushels there. And what looks like a tight supply picture actually gets a little bit more comfortable. So, you know, that's a concerning point going forward, too, in terms of price. I mean, we may still see production come down, but if the demand comes down at the same rate, you know, we're going to we're just going to continue to be a little bit you know, more pressure with that market because we're getting our supply side of this bigger. And that's still what the market wants to see overall is where is that end of supply going to be? What's the trend for that supply? So that's going to be something we watch as we go into this into the winter months. Definitely be watching that when we get into that February, March window. When we know what the South American crop is. That's when we historically get those cancellations of Brazilian or, or excuse me, of Chinese bean purchases as they shift to Brazil. You know, that could be a really key window this year if that South American crop does come home like they're expecting it to. John, as well, I, I wonder with harvest really picking up across the Midwest, that typical seasonal harvest pressure, I assume that's got to be weighing in. But I'm also hearing a lot of chatter from farmers that uh, some of this early harvested quarter beans are taking it right off the combine and taking it to town and taking advantage of some still a pretty strong cash basis in some regions of the country. Are you hearing some of the same? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm talking to a producer today that basically the beans are going right to town to fill contracts as well as just take care of the market that was there. He had pretty good prices in front of him, a little concerned about the longer term. So, you know, obviously that might be the best play right now because they want those bushels in. Same thing on some of the early corn harvest here as well. So, again, again, that's just a reflection of maybe where we are with the old crop supply picture. Maybe the USDA will shed a little light on that, come to come the report at the end of the week with the grain stocks number. Now, this is still that window that can go back and tweak the January final numbers as well as, you know, maybe be off in those June grain stock totals. You know, that's one thing I'm still wondering because the way the cash market acted this year just didn't feel like the bushels were there. I know the, the big story was that producers weren't selling because money, money was still pretty good, so they didn't need to sell it. But at the same time frame, you know, now that things are kind of moving around, here comes the next supply. You know, we would think we saw some more movement. We really didn't. So that's going to be something to watch on that report on, th on Friday this week. Well, it's amazing, too, on that cash side. I mean, obviously, it's regional, but there's still, I mean, some sevens on the board in, in many spots for corn. And, you know, you just think about some places still, may, you know, 50 cents to a dollar over. Um, it's it's not everywhere, obviously, but still plenty of regions that are holding in there on the cash side. And that seems to be doing uh, doing the work right now when the, when the futures board is kind of falling apart. And that's still going to be the bottom line in this thing is what's the cash market got for you in your area of the world. And, you know, again, sometimes futures markets because of just what happens on the technical side, the breakdown in terms of the, the charts and where the money is flowing, it kind of forgets about the fundamental picture. You know, again, we'll probably accelerate things too far to the downside and then see some type of recovery. Maybe that's already happening in that livestock sector right now with the hard sell off these last couple of days of both hogs and live cattle and feeder cattle. But again, you just, you know, again, that's money flow. That's momentum selling. And it just kind of becomes a trigger to all sell. And they forget about the fundamentals. Now, if those fundamentals stay tight, this market will have to find some equilibrium somewhere. And that's still just going to be led by the cash prices that we see, whether it's for bushels of grain or the animals on the hoof. 
Well, John, as well, let's talk about uh, the livestock trade. Let's shift our focus over there. And, uh, you know, cattle, cattle on feed report last Friday looked a little bearish again. Uh, I, I thought cattle were going to do an okay job on, on Monday, started off stronger, but then kind of succumbed to all the outside market pressure. What's your thoughts in this cattle market after seeing that cattle on feed report? Well, again, let's go to the technical side of things. Look at the charts for the weekly. Big weekly reversal. In other words, we traded outside the range of the previous week, finishing at the bottom of the range. That, that's a pretty negative signal. That could turn, give us a bit of a trend change. A lot of times that could happen over a course of a couple, handful of weeks. So we'll see what happens there. Cattle on feed numbers, you know, for the most part, I think we're priced in. I mean, with the sell-off, yeah, that 2% miss on the placement side, was still within expectations in terms of the range at the top end of it, but it was still within the range. And that number seems to be very hard to peg right now in terms of when we got for placement numbers coming in. So we did have a nice start to the day. I felt good firm open, pushed a dollar higher on the live cattle, pushed a dollar plus on some of the feeder contracts with grains being down. But then you just saw that stock market just start rolling over. You again saw that dollar go back to the upside. And that just brought those sellers right back into the marketplace. Again, crude oil also flipped over to the negative. You know, we're really concerned about the consumer dollar, the consumer demand. You'll look at carcass values. Last week, we were about $4 lower on choice carcasses, about $8 lower, $8 lower on select. You know, those are the things that concern us. Now, cash market still sounds like it's there. We're expecting cattle supplies to start to tighten up as we move into the fourth quarter. You know, we'll see what the cash prices are again this week. That could provide us a little bit of support. But just, again, felt like we broke apart technically and money went to the sidelines today. And we just couldn't hang on to any of those gains in both live cattle and feeders. Over in the hog market, I know you and I were talking before we went on the air. You're a little concerned about that hog market. Just uh, we got back to... Uh, levels we haven't seen since the beginning of the year. And I know uh, just that retracement in hogs, uh, especially after Monday's session, it, it looks a little ugly right there. Uh, when you're talking that big of a drop in a matter of four or five days, that hog market definitely got punched in the gut here. Big, big move today, pushing $4 lower in the front end. Just really makes you question what's going on in that market again overall. Now, big thing this week, quarterly hogs and pigs will be out on Thursday the 29th. I doubt we're going to see much expansion, especially with prices coming down and grain, grain prices where they are. This market could be setting itself up pretty negative for a report that could be pretty friendly, especially if we get that confirmation on hog numbers. Not saying we're going to be off to the races here with that, but at least at this time frame, maybe we've got a lot of negative news priced in in this marketplace. Again, it's technical selling. The funds are still sitting on a fairly large hog position at the end of the last, you know, going into the commitment traders report. They just moved some money to the sidelines here. We broke apart technically. The momentum sellers are there. Fortunately, in the hog market, there's not enough people to step in front of the market to keep it from free falling. Now we got to see where we go. We did kind of hold the low at the end of the day today. Saw a little bit of profit taking. So maybe we've kind of washed this thing out per se here. But I'll tell you right now, those charts look scary. And if we can't get the cash market to wake up or retail values to get a little lift, it might be just easier to hit the sell button right now than is the buy button. Well, and I wonder as well, with all the outside recession fears and everything else, John, you know, what's the uh, what's what's thing going to look like at the grocery store? What is that retail counter going to look like here? You know, let's say we get into November, let's say another month out. You know, what's that consumer demand going to be looking like uh, in the protein sector? I'm very curious just with all of this global recession and risk off type of trading we're seeing right now. Yeah, and that's the wet blanket over top of anything in the livestock sector for a prolonged type rally right now is, you know, what's that do to the U.S. consumer? You know, I heard a stat today that credit card debt is exploding again. You know, we got used to having that loose money supply in front of us. Now that's starting to tighten up. People still want to spend like they were before and put it back on the credit card side. But if we start seeing some issues in terms of labor, that could really put a lot of pressure on the consumer market. You know, and that's got the cattle market beef and the hog market mostly concerned. Probably a bigger fa factor in cattle market because of the higher price retail goods. So, you know, staying in front of this thing right now, that is still the biggest concern right now is what does the consumer do here? Even despite the tighter cattle numbers and hog numbers that we're expecting to see down the road, we're going to get confirmation on those. I, I would expect here going into 2023. 
the consumer's not willing to step up and buy that product, again, that just backlogs the system even more so. and could be, again, that wet blanket that keeps this market from really getting some type of traction going into 2023. John, it's hard to find a, a bright spot uh, on the on a day like we saw on Monday. You know, energy prices coming down uh, maybe helps a little bit in some instances. I know Nat Gas, we pulled like four dollars off this market here in the last month or so. But I know also there's factors in the energy side that don't help out grains and livestock, though. Even though prices are coming down, John. You know, again, very much so. And that comes down to the consumer and the lack of demand. I know supplies are tight, but, you know, we get demand-driven markets. In this case, it's due to the lack of, you know, again, we talked about that ethanol grind in terms of last week. Just maybe that demand is not there. The gasoline usage, you know, back to pre-pandemic levels and below, you know, so we're looking at numbers that just are showing that the consumer is kind of shutting off here at these price levels and things need to come down in order to get that to fire back up. So, again, that just brings all these ripple effects into the marketplace. Again, you mentioned it with the, with the meat section. What does the consumer show? What does the consumer do? If we've shut down our buying, we shut down the usage, that commodity space is just going to have a hard time finding any traction. And again, here you're watching the equity markets breaking to new lows, taking out the lows from June. That just opens up the downside even more so. Money needs to move from place to place to cover margin calls and things of that nature that the funds may be achieving in other markets. It just really builds a real toxic environment here in terms of market prices wanting to go higher, at least in the short term. Dairy market, John, any thoughts there on uh, Monday session? You know, again, saw some profit taking there, even though we had a good move in the block cheese today. A lot of times when they get that block to tighten up the gap to the barrels, you know, five cents higher today on blocks, we get some type of response on the milk side of it. And we didn't see that as we're pushing 30 plus lower. Just feels like another market that, you know, even though there's not a lot of players in it, maybe a little bit overvalued in this window. Again, the market just wants to take a little bit of premium out. Still well supported because of the lack of supply that's out there and that maybe that low 20s. We'll have to watch that market going forward here. But again, just not a real happy market in terms of how it's acting and just look at the way the charts are pointing out to right now. Again, just feels like the money wants to push that market to the downside as well. And unfortunately, in milk, you get really wild swings because there's just not a lot of players that want to step in front of a downtrending market. John, uh, I'll circle back as well. I totally uh, skipped past the wheat markets, which were actually the downside leader in the grains on Monday. Uh, but I, I would have to assume a lot of the same thoughts we've already covered uh, in those wheat markets on the day Monday. Anything else there that you see that you want to add mm -hmm. or mention today? I mean, I can throw a little bit of optimism in. You know, we're still in a nice little uptrend here. We're putting that round bottom in the wheat market. With this break, we're just going back down to the bottom of that channel. So we'll have to see if that can hold. Obviously, in terms of the export numbers and shipments today, wheat was a pretty good number, well within expectations, but still a solid number overall. Obviously, that U.S. dollar continues to weigh on the, on the demand for U.S. wheat. But we're just going to watch what's happening. Now, again, some, what's going on with the Ukraine? That's still going to be a story going forward in this wheat market. Now, the Odessa port's now been hit three times now in the last handful of days with drone attacks. You know, again, so it just feels like things are still escalating there that could limit some bushels coming out of that area, which could still be friendly wheat as well as corn. Uh, but, you know, got to watch the charts here the next couple of days. Again, we got to kind of hold this area or we break this kind of round bottom that we're building. Uh, but at least we got some upward momentum overall in wheat. You know, the same thing's still true in the other grains. Even though we're getting a hard pullback here, the trend is still at least working higher. We haven't turned anything over there, but we just got some air to take out to get back to the bottom of the ranges. And we'll see where that can find that support. Well, John, great stuff as always. I know if producers need some advice working through these volatile markets, they can reach out to you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing very easily. You guys have a lot of great resources available. How can they get a hold of you? Yeah, I'd love to talk with them anytime. Feel free to give me a call, 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email at johnh at totalfarmmarketing.com. Again, don't forget about our website, totalfarmmarketing.com. A lot of great information out there. Again, there's no obligation to pick up the phone and make a phone call. You know, obviously you're getting busy in the fields at this time of the year. Make sure you stay on top of your marketing. You know, prices are going to move very quickly. And again, when people get busy, they kind of forget about that factor. So definitely keep that in front of yourself right now. Well, John, we always appreciate the time and insight. Thanks for joining us here today. And uh, we will let you go. Enjoy your week. And we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Have a great week.
John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing is our guest today, and that's going to do it for Market Talk. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.